All right, let's move into our member segment. I cannot wait to get into this. Today we are discussing what we think are great video games for Euro gamers. And Jennifer and I have each come up with five games, five different games that we think are excellent recommendations, uh, at least for us personally, of games that we think the Euro gamer would find enjoyment in in the video game world. Jennifer, do you want to? Do you think we should maybe just sort of go back and forth? You want to start, and you do one, I'll do one. Does that sound good? Um. Uh, why don't we have it where either I do my five and then you do your five? Sure. Do you have a preference? Only, only I'm, I'm... because otherwise I'm going to lose track. <laughs> totally, totally, uh, totally up to you. Do you want to go first? Or do you want me to go first? Um, I can go first. I've got it all written out. Great. So. Um, as my introduction to video games for Euro gamers, there is a decided lack, I just want to get this out there, of Mac games, and there's a lot of indie games, okay? And the two actually relate to each other because indie devs can't usually risk uh, bringing out a game for a Mac and having it not sell. It's way more likely to sell on the PC. Okay, the games that I'm going to talk about, I find that I found them all to be accessible. You guys might notice I use that word a lot um, without a steep learning curve. Accessibility means for for me that someone can look at the game and figure out what's going on without some long teach. One of the strengths of video games is that the rules are incorporated into the game so you don't ever have to worry about well did i get that rule right or you know i mean those kind of questions in general don't come up um which is a positive so um my first game that i would suggest for a euro gamer is an older game it's a little older called banished and banished you um you start with well it depends on, on your start but let's assume uh, a normal start. You're going to start with in a forest, probably next to water, with a bunch of people who have shown up, and you know they need to be housed, they want to eat, they need to be warm, um, and as time goes on, they want to be schooled, they want to be educated, and so you can you control all, all of this. So you know you you go and you. Have you assign people to be wood choppers or fish gatherers or oh herbalist people who do herbs um, um, so that you know if people get sick they have a chance uh, of of getting better. Um, this was developed by a single um, a single death and it is Windows only on Steam and it's single player. Uh, Matt, have you tried Banished? No, I'm looking at it right now. I'd never even heard of it before. It, it, so, is this sort of a uh, a sandbox game, or is there yeah. is there a structure? It's kind to of it? a sandbox. I mean, it's not really okay. In my opinion, a sandbox game means that you can't lose. Well, Banished mm -hmm. or starve to death or freeze to death very easily. So, I wouldn't call it myself a sandbox game, but it doesn't have a campaign. I'll, I'll let's leave it like that. Does it have a, an ending? Is there like a credits roll? I don't know because I don't know anyone who has ever gotten to whatever might be an ending because most of the time what happens is you're not satisfied. You know, oh, gee, I've got too many uneducated people or, right. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm barely making it by. So I start over or at least that's what happened with me. I probably played Badass for about 50 to 60 hours. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. All right. So for your for you, you know, pick up and deliver train games, not 18xx guys, folks. Mm -hmm. There's no um, 18xx equivalent on 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 in video games that I know of, and that's basically because, in my opinion, the AI needed to make a truly valid um, 18xx game is probably uh, out of reach you know, the mm. cost um, for most devs. So, it, Railway Empire, which was just recently free on the Epic's Game Store, um, is um, 
is a very nice looking graphic game. And you start in the U.S., you know, with all the U.S. towns. What's the title Uh, again, Jennifer? Pardon? What's the title again? I'm sorry. Railway Empire. Got it. Railway Empire. Okay. Okay. All right. And like I said, it's it's very close to um, pick up and deliver. Um, you start in one city. Um, there's like little cow place, places where you can go and get beef and bring it to the people if that's what they want. Or maybe they want um, wheat or barley so that they can make beer in their city. There are companies already in the cities like you might have, you know, a a beer making industry. Um, There's also passengers who want to go, let's say, from New York to Pittsburgh. Um, It it has, it's really, this is a good part about it. It has both a simple signaling where basically trains can move through each other and it also has the more standard, I'd say, um, complex signaling where, you know, you have to kind of do double track or, you know, do, do side tracks and really manage your signal so that particularly male and passengers can get to their destinations and pay you more because the slower the passengers get there, the less you, you're going to get paid. Um, the other thing is, of course, you know, if you only have one route between uh, Pittsburgh and New York and and you're trying to run like four or five things through there, it can be challenging. There's warehouses, though, so you can't put passengers in warehouses, of course, but you can put cargo in there. Um, the, the other game that is always free is a game called Open TTD. Uh, a lot of people love it. I found the graphics wanting and having to deal with a zillion mods was not something that I was interested in. Well, that's well, from 2004, Empire. Open Pardon? TTD. Yeah. Oh, I was just looking at Open TTD, the Transport Tycoon Deluxe from 2004. Yeah, it does. It does look like uh, like an old Sim City game from the 90s. Right. Well, you know, it is. I mean, it's, it's it can be very complex, particularly when you start throwing in mods. Uh, oh, folks, for those who don't know what a mod is, think of a mod as a house rule. It's kind of the uh, uh, equivalent, except that the the mods all stay with where it was that you got the game from. So, um, so with Railway Empire, there's t- there's several DLCs. There's a British DLC. There's an Andes DLC. Um, the game includes a campaign and it includes separate scenarios. And I believe it has a challenge mode. It has a free mode where you can just do a random map. And it has a sandbox mode where there are no costs. So normally there's cost and you have to kind of manage, you know, the the finances as well. There might be stocks. I don't remember, but it's not an 18xx style stock game. Have you played it yet? No, this I, I've just added it to my wish list. This looks fantastic. Um, it's beautiful too. The graphics yeah, seem yeah, wonderful. That's, yeah, like, uh, yeah, yeah. If you're that's, if you're a train person, I, I'm admittedly not a train person, really. But if you are, this is uh, this would be some train porn. I think. Right. Exactly. It's been ported to nearly every platform except mobile and Mac. It is not available on yeah. Mac. It is a single player only game. Right. All right. Yep. And, Add it to my wish list. All right. And then my favorite game of all of the decade is Anno 1800. And Anno, the series, started with Anno 1602 as a plain city builder that had production lines, which is a theme that's core to all of the Anno games. And by the way, Anno, this is going to, it's going to get a board game and it's its third board game in the, the series. I believe the series has seven games in it totally. Um, okay. So 
Anno 1800 is a really big city builder business sim production line game that includes combat, but you don't have to have combat. You can you can basically set the game up so you don't have to worry about combat if you don't want to. It it includes non-player characters and the the ability to create fantastic city creations. Um, they just released the amusement park pack so you can put roller coasters and ferris are you serious yeah wow. yeah it's great it's like beautiful you make a world fair in the game as as well and that looks awesome too and guys 1800 and we're going to the caribbean and you're going jennifer i thought you didn't like 1800 times in the caribbean but see there are no slaves in the game for sure and the separate cities and the Caribbean are treated just like your European cities and are considered trading partners, not enslaved people. And it, and I understand that someone might say, well, I think that's, you know, splitting hairs, but it's not because the in the Caribbean, the people there don't want as much, which is fine, but they still want things and you are still responsible for getting them to them. You know, I mean, you have to assign the workers just like you do in Europe, and um, you treat them just like your European uh, equivalent. So I don't have an issue. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just don't have an issue with the implementation. But the beauty of 18, uh, Anno 1800 is that they included Black people, women, disenfranchised people in the game as viable living people. So you can play as an ex-slave. There's several women with credible stories, like there's a woman whose husband died in debtor's prison. And so she's an NPC that's trying to regain his fortune. Um, there is a madame who is of color in the game and also a black pirate and a female pirate. I mean, it's like a beautiful representation. I mean, presentation of representation. I just love it. It is multiplayer. It's also co-op Windows, only available on Epic Store or Uplay and just buy it on Uplay because you'll need their client anyway. Did you play it, Matt? I, I bought it on your recommendation when we uh, had our discussion about representation in games. And I have been waiting because I was saving up to get my ultra wide monitor, which I got this week. And I, I installed it a few days ago and I cannot wait to play it because I've seen people play it on ultra wide monitor and it looks amazing. Really? So I'm very, very excited to dive into it this week. Wow. Uh, yeah, no ultra wide for me, but I'm, I'm, I'm quite satisfied with what I've got. Yeah, no, it's a gorgeous game, and um, I'm really excited to try it. It, it definitely sounds like it's going to be very much up my alley and going to Yeah, the take only over thing is, Matt, if you go to bed at 3 in the morning with kids, it's not good, okay? No, and, and that's, yes, that does happen. That is a problem. That is a problem. <laughs> Just giving especially, you a little warning. Especially when mine get up at like 5.30 these days. Right. <laughs> Yep. So, okay. The the next one is called the Factory Town, which you probably haven't heard of. It, it's uh, done by again a single dev, and it. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. It looks like it could have been designed by one of our favorite designers, Uwe Rosenberg. There's mm. wood and stone and coal and iron. And your job is to keep your people housed and fed. Who knew, right? But in the meantime, you make ways to provide more stuff for your people all the way up to magical ways. Um, and unlike some base builders, there's currency. So you don't get to place all these great buildings for free. And some of them also have ongoing costs. So at least at the start of the game, you're going to be doing some money management. Um, energy production is important as well. And you research better ways to transport, produce, and expand your factory town. 
It has a whiff of Factorio, which if you guys know about video games, you, you've definitely heard of it. But um, it's way simpler and more accessible than Factorio. And I really uh, appreciate it for that. Note that it's in early access, so things can change before release. I have over 400 hours of it. Oh, in my. Early access, and I've been quite pleased. It also has fantastic music. Really enjoy it. Okay, it's single player and Windows only. What is the uh, what is the hook here that that gets you? What 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 about it do you enjoy so much that made you put four hundred hours into it? Uh, because you you know see, um, unlike Anno, in in Factory Town. Things run out, right? So you put your little houses down, you put your farm, or actually you start har harvesting grain and trying to make flour and then trying to make bread. And then the grain runs out because you were harvesting it all the time and didn't replant. So now you have to go and research a real farm and then you have the farm. But then over time, you know, the farm runs out because you didn't put in enough fields. And in order to put in fields, you have to have uh, fertilizer and, and um, you know, uh, actual seeds. And um, the transportation options are great. You can put stuff in chutes. You have wagons. You have um, trains, which are really well done. It's the best implementation of trains in a mm. base builder that I've oh, ever wow. seen because you can say, okay, well, at this stop, you should drop this off and then pick this up and only pick up half of what's there, right? And um, it's it's fantastic. Most games, the trains are pretty simple and most games that are base builders, I have not found the trains worth it, but trains are really well done here. Um, and you know, it's just you get a new map. The the map choices are amazing. You can have flat maps, you can have plains, you can have volcanoes, you can I mean just tons of stuff. So there's always a different way of playing. He just implemented scenarios so you can have a rail scenario or you can have, you know, different setups to make it more more interesting. Yeah, I've uh, this one is also available for Mac too, which is nice. Is it? Yeah, it says Windows and Mac. Yeah. Okay, if it says Mac, it's there. I didn't know that he. Well, that's good. It should be available for Mac because I mean, it's not like it, you know, takes up two hundred megs. I mean, gigs. Yeah. 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 No, and it's uh, it's on sale right now for fourteen bucks. I've never played a game like this before, um, but I, I would like to try this genre out, and I think this will be the one I try. I've never I've never tried. You know, Factorio or any of those games like yeah, that. No, no, no. You know, you know, I would do this. This is to me feels yeah. very Euro and it feels very Uwe Rosenberg. It sounds relaxing. Right. Uh, and the music. Maybe even Alfred might like the music. Oh. <laughs> all, right. all right. I'm gonna check this one out too. You're costing me a lot of money here, Jennifer. The next well, one will be free. No, but it's all for a good cause. Am I right? <laughs> you are right. You are right. All right, the last is for our abstract fans. It's called Mini Metro. Have you played that? No, I haven't. Dude, you are so behind. No, I, look, look, <laughs> you're, you're teaching me a lot here. Yeah, Mini so, Metro. <laughs> Mini Metro is basically, again, it's, it, you know, I'm going to talk about delivering passengers, but it's not a train game, okay? It's an, an abstract game where you're trying to deliver passengers to the symbol they want to go to. Like you start out with squares, triangles, and circles. And then your passengers will want to go to these different places. Except the problem is you keep finding all these new squares, triangles, and circles outside of your train line. So you have to keep expanding the train line, but you might not be able to do it very well without redoing everything. And, you know, you keep getting more and more passengers until, like, you know, everybody gets mad and the game's over. Right. So <laughs> it looks like, it sounds like, like bus meets Tokyo Metro a little bit. Right. Yeah. 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 Except it's harder, much harder. Right. Yeah. And it's available on Windows, Mac, 
and iOS and maybe Android. I don't know because I haven't checked. I don't right. game on Android because I'm fortunate to have an iPad. Wow, All that, right. um, um, it looks beautiful. I mean, I lo- it really it looks like Tokyo Metro. It's that same yeah, sort of. It looks it does, like you're, you're playing it? Yeah, it does. playing it does. on a subway map. Yeah, it does. Yep. All right, I'm gonna give out some shouts to Satisfactory. It's a Windows game. If you liked Mousetrap as a kid, Satisfactory is perfect. Okay, huh. uh, I choose it over Factorio because, again, Satisfactory, in my opinion, is more accessible. But if you really like both of them, you should. I mean, if you like Mousetrap, you should probably look at both of them. Uh, Factorio, at least, has a demo. Um, it's uh, both of those are co-op multiplayer. The other one, shout out Stardew Valley, because nearly every Euro gamer secretly wants to be a gardener, right? Yeah, uh, I've played Stardew Valley. I enjoy that game. Yeah, Mac, Windows, co-op, and it's also on mobile and console. And Switch, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I it. yeah. And that's cool. it. <laughs> Amazing. Wow, I love it. Those are, I had, I, uh, I think I had heard of one of those. So that's really, that's fantastic. Um, mine are not going to be as... Uh, as unknown. So these are probably games that many gamers have maybe heard of, but maybe they haven't thought of them in Euro terms, or if they have, uh, or if they're not big gamers, this might uh, be good places for them to start. So first thing I'm going to talk about Paradox Games. Paradox Games is a publisher that makes insanely complicated games that you will spend 100 hours just learning and then um, maybe 10,000 hours playing. Paradox Games, uh, my th- Three favorites are Crusader Kings 3, which just came out recently, is incredible. Hearts of Iron 4, which is a World War II game, and Stellaris. Now, these are very complicated, grand strategy games. A grand strategy game is a game that you are handling things on a very large scale. So Crusader Kings, you are one person in England, uh, And you are not playing as that person, though. You are playing as a dynasty. So when that person dies, your child takes over. And when that child dies, their child takes over. And your goal is just to make sure that you always have an heir that takes over and uh, is able to keep your line going. It's got crazy tech trees and dynasty tech trees and conquering war mechanics. This this is a, uh, to me, paradox is Sierra Madre games or Ion games. These are Phil Eklund games. These are games that are so complicated and take so long to learn that that better be a huge part of the enjoyment for you. You must, if you don't enjoy learning games, you will not enjoy playing these games because half the game is learning it. Matt, I would say that Stellaris is relatively accessible. Well, you're smarter than me, Jennifer, because I found it very complicated. <laughs> I had, I, it took me forever to learn Stellaris. Yes, of, of all the Paradox games, it's 100% the simplest. And I would say Hearts of Iron 4 is not simple at all, at least right. once you start adding in expansions. But but that is a war game that is all about uh, 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 putting your... Um, your resource lines together and making sure that your troops have supplies and making sure that you can feed them. And I mean, it is, it's a war game. That's all about making sure your factories are up and running in a way to, you know, stay ahead of the technology curve of other countries and make sure your supply lines are in order. And it, it's very much the, you know, the business side of war um, and it's wildly complicated. Um, and Stellaris is, is yeah, it's it's basically you know Orion or, or other great you know sort of civilization building and expanding 4x games. Um, it's pretty much a 4x game, but to me these are if if you like Sierra Madre games, if you like really complicated games that really give back as much as you want to put in, I would recommend you take a look at Paradox, and you'll you'll find a genre within there that you probably like. Yeah, did um, you know though that there Euro, Europa Universalis. Mm-hmm. The video game implementation of the board game. Yes, that's right. Exactly. And then now they have a Crusader Kings board game of the video game. And yeah, the, the, the people who at Paradox are admittedly big Euro board gamers. So you will often find Euro mechanics throughout their games and vice versa. Um, do, you have, do you have much experience with Paradox games? Um, 
I played some Stellaris, but my favorite game in that genre is Distant Worlds by far. It's right. much better. Right. I haven't played that, but I've, I've, I've heard a lot about it. I've heard good things. Um, moving on uh, uh, is Darkest Dungeon. I've talked about it before on the podcast. It's one of my favorite video games of all time. Uh, the theme of it is uh, sort of Cthulhu, gothic horror. Um, but this is, you will think this is an action game where you're, you know, a turn-based sort of, a uh, strategy action game, but this is really a base management game. This is, you uh, are going to put together a dungeon diving team and that you're going to send it out into a, uh, a uh, it's, this is a roguelike, so it's going to be a different dungeon every time and permanent things happen, sort of like a legacy game. When your characters die and they will die all the time, um, you keep playing because it's not about the characters. It's not about the team you're putting together. It's about the town you're building that these characters show up at. And it's about building up, sending in a team uh, and having them come out with as many resources as possible that you can then use to build and upgrade your town, which then will equip the next team better to go farther and farther. And there is a, there is an end game to this. There is a final boss. There is, you know, a thing to build up to, but this is also, I, I, the theme you will find in my video games is insanely complicated and an endless hole to dive into that you will always be learning new things. And Darkest Dungeon is a game that seems very simple, but I have probably spent over a hundred hours watching Let's Play of Darkest Dungeon and probably three times that playing it because there's always new things to learn and there's secrets and there's so much going on. Um, I, I've, I've been obsessed with the game for years and I think it is a beautiful game of, of resource management and uh, you know uh, risk assessment and and there's a huge amount of strategy and sort of you know how you you, you put your team together every there's asymmetrical characters. They all do different things. And then the, the order that they are sent out in and the gear they're given. And uh, to me, it, it feels like a board game. And in fact, they are making a board game of it. That's going to be coming to Kickstarter next year. Um, have you played Darkest Dungeon, Jennifer? Yes. Yeah. And you, you know, I should play it more. I should play I, it more. It is a beautiful game. And, they, and well, you might want to hold out because Darkest Dungeon 2 is probably going to be coming out in the next year. Um, Darkest Dungeon is wonderful and beautiful and has a lot of expansions. But I, I can't think of anything I'm more excited for in the video game world than Darkest Dungeon 2 because the, you know, the, the devs are, are fantastic. And um, I can't wait to see what they do with the whole sequel. I'm sure they're not just going to reskin it with better graphics. I'm, I'm sure it'll be something pretty new and interesting. Yeah, um, I will say, yeah, go ahead. For another game on my iPad, and I'm sure the two won't come out for even longer. So That's I'll true. And Dark, Darkest Dungeon is available on everything. Anything you can play a video game on, it's, 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 been, it's been put on at this point. I will also say Paradox Games, I didn't mention. Every Paradox game, at least everyone that I've ever seen, is available both for Mac and for PC. Right, That's something right. they yeah. always do. Yeah, they're um, like so those. Yeah. Those are the rare games you can play on both. Uh, my third is, uh, I think, the only AAA action game I have in here, and that is Doom Eternal. Um, this is a first-person shooter. This is a cartoon violence, over-the-top, ridiculous, you know, shoot 'em up game. So why am I talking about it in terms of Euro fans? Because to me, Doom Eternal is a Euro. Uh, I have liked the other Dooms. I, I really liked the last Doom, the sort of reboot Doom that came out in 2016, but I never cared about the originals. I wasn't, I, I, I like first person shooters, but it's never been my number one thing. Um, and I, uh, I read some reviews about Doom Eternal and they were describing it in board game terms. They were saying there's, there's serious resource management going on. There is tactical considerations, strategic considerations. And I thought, that's ridiculous. What are you talking about? You just go into a room and you shoot stuff and, and you see things explode. And then I played it and it's it's actually become in my top 10 favorite games of all time. And, and they're right. So what they've done is they've turned it into a... A, 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 a puzzle game with some serious strategic considerations. So imagine this, okay. You have eight different weapons, okay? Each weapon 
is necessary to kill a different type of monster. Okay. Beyond that, you have about 10 different resources. Some of those are, are different um, ammunitions for your weapons. Each weapon has multiple uh, ways that it can be used ammunition to do different things, and they'll all be used to, to, to handle different uh, enemies. Okay, then you enter into a room, and here is six of the 20 enemies. You have to quickly figure out the correct order to kill them in, because some die faster than others, some do more damage, some do damage over time. So then you have to figure out, okay, there's six enemies. Each one needs a different gun, and they, there's a correct order to this. Meanwhile, they're chasing you all over the room and trying to murder you. Um, so you're being forced to make these quick decisions on how to spend your resources. And, and bullets and, and ammunition is uh, a, a, a valuable and rare resource. So you only have a certain amount of ammunition and to get the job done, and you have to figure out the correct way to do it. To me, it was a glorious puzzle that also was wildly entertaining and exciting. And 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 this isn't realistic violence. It's it's silly with you know giant ridiculous monsters and you know you're not. This isn't like a a, a war murder simulation. This is very silly. You know you're in hell killing demons and stuff. Um, I also just think the game is gorgeous. But yeah, it's uh, I, I would imagine not a game for Jennifer at all. But 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 it, it oddly fit the bill for me as a Euro game. Yeah, you know, there was a time when I really kind of liked those kind of games, but now, you know, I don't know. I've just gotten older, and I really like the creative parts of base builders and city builders, yeah. you know? I mean, yeah. um, one of, I think if I was going to ever play a shooter, it would probably be something in the Bioshock world, sure. you know, uh, System Shock, Bioshock. Yeah. yeah, those those appealed, but the rest of them have kind of fallen flat for me. Yeah, I hear you. And Doom Eternal is not relaxing. Um, I have I have ended levels where I'm shaking and sweating and oh like thoroughly exhausted and felt like I. But but I also felt like I did something really like that game. I play it on hard, um, which I recommend you do if you play this game because it is if you play this on hard, it's. It's so intense and you will have such, uh, I, I like my games to be very brutal. Uh, I like that's darkest dungeon is also just very hard and very uh, unforgiving. Um, and I kind of enjoy that in my video games. I don't know why, but I do. And doom eternal is really hard. And, uh, but yeah, but it's fair. I, I I'm okay with hard as long as it's fair. Right. I can totally um, understand that. Uh, all right. Next up is about as far from Doom Eternal as you can get. These are two uh, sort of detective games. Her Story, two words, A-G-R-S-T-O-R-Y, and Return of the Obra Dinn. Her Story is a fantastic game where you are sat at a... Imagine if you went into a police precinct and sat down in front of a police computer and had access to all of the videotaped conversations and interviews with witnesses in a murder case. And you were meant to solve the murder by watching all of the different interviews that were done by the police of witnesses or, uh, you know, persons of interest on the case. And so you're watching actual video footage, you know, of actors with cameras shot, not, not CG. And you have, you're just given this giant dump of information and video and it's up to you to go through it and figure out uh the mystery and what's really fun is that the way that you search for the videos is by imagine if somebody transcribed everything they said and you can search by words used so if you type in a word it will show you every video where that word is said and so the fun thing is you watch a video and you start out just randomly watching a video and then that person says somebody's name. Oh, and then you Google that name and then four videos show up. Oh, I've never seen that person before. And then it, sorry, it links you down these different paths. And it's really up to you how you solve the mystery. Um, and it's thoroughly satisfying um, and has a great ending. And you can play the whole thing in a couple of hours. I, play, I played it with my wife and we had so much fun just sitting there and doing it together. It, it almost felt like a board game. So I'm going to compare it to, you know, Detective or Scotland Yard or, you know, this sort of very thematic deduction, you know, mystery detective games. Um, and I thought it was about as good as one of those as I'd ever played. Um, 
And the other is Return of the Ober Din, which is also a, a straight up detective game. Solve the mystery, but the graphics on it look like they're from the 80s on a Mac game. They look like uh, Return to Dark Castle or, you know, really sort of old seventh guest, like these really pixelated old school Mac OS games. Um, but it's a really smart and interesting uh, murder mystery on a, well, on a pirate ship, sort of, the, uh, the Ober Din. Um, have you tried either of those, Jennifer? Uh, no, no. I, you know, I probably should, but I always get so involved in my base building games or maybe distant worlds. But yeah. About, you know, the time that I have. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, uh, and la- my son uh, loves her, her, her story. By the way, oh, cool. my son is almost 30, so it's not like, you know, a kid. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, her, st- her st- I really do recommend her story to almost anybody. And that's also available on uh, it's on iOS, it's on your iPad. I think it's fun to play it on on something where you have a keyboard cuz you you do get that tactic like the whole game you're sitting at a computer. The game you're looking at a PC screen. So it's something very thematic if you're actually playing it on a, you know, computer or a laptop cuz you really are, you know, the game is 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 a computer <laughs> and right. and pulling up pulling up video clips. Right. Um really puts you in the mood when you're at a computer. All right. My last one is uh, the most popular deck builder video game of all time. Um, (laughs) This is Slay the Spire. Not, uh, you know, there's nothing that needs to be said about Slay the Spire in the board game world. This is the best example I think we have of, uh, of a board game mechanic becoming a monster hit video game. You know, they took Donald Vaccarino's, uh, deck building mechanic that he invented in Dominion, and they turned it into a rogue-like deck builder called Slay the Spire, and it is a flawless gem. It's a masterpiece, a ten out of ten. Um, it's available on anything you can possibly imagine playing a video game on at this point. Um, I will say, if you have already played Slay the Spire, which you very well may have, and you're looking for something similar. But that does it in a completely different way. I have fallen in love with Monster Train, uh, which I believe is only available for PC. Um, But Monster Train takes the exact same idea as Slay the Spire and kind of mixes it with Darkest Dungeon in that you are... You're, you're playing the cards and they're creating um, a row of characters and uh, those characters are sort of defending your base or your train. Um, and the order that you put them out and the abilities they have. It's a really interesting sort of mix between Darkest Dungeon and Slay the Spire. So if you've put hundreds of hours into Slay the Spire, like so many of us have, and you're looking for a deck builder that does something totally different, but is equally interesting, I I really think you should check out Monster Train. Jennifer, what are your thoughts on Slay the Spire? Well, as I was mentioning to you, it's actually inspired by a game called Dream Quest. Right. And I happen to like Dreamcrest better, but again, Dreamcrest is much simpler, has very kind of plain, maybe even ugly graphics, but it does basically the same thing. And um, I've played Slay the Spire. I get frustrated because I can never get, you know, past the boss. And so those kind of games eventually wear me down, you know, so I kind of, that's why I kind of stick with my little base builders because i don't get frustrated i can just keep building more (laughs) yeah there's something wrong with me i like that frustration i really i like a game that goes like you suck at this game no no there's nothing wrong with you but you aren't 63 years old that's (laughs) (laughs) fair fair um so yeah that was our uh recommendations for um video games for people who enjoy euros and um I, I'm so glad that I got yours, Jennifer. I've added them all to my wish list. And I'm going to try them all. And hopefully people listening have found some cool options to try as well. Um, I, I, I hope so. Um, you know, the only thing about the ones that I did, the uh, multiplayer in them takes a long time. Is Slate the Spire co-op? No, single player only. It's only a single player. Okay. Yeah, but they they have daily challenges, which are really fun that um, sort of add to the longevity of the game after you've sort of explored most of it. Um, their cha- their daily sort of challenges are fun. And okay. I, I know uh, keep right. the game, get, keep the game interesting. It's a fun, you know, check in every morning, do your daily, come back. 
Hey, if you enjoyed that video, you very well might enjoy the other videos you now see being suggested to you on screen. Also, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could like, share, or subscribe to our Game Brain channel. Thanks so much.